you know, season one pissed me off because you could tell someone told them to vaguely follow something that resembled Robert Jordan. In season two, there is no Robert Jordan. There is no Wheel of Time. There is no Eye of the World, Great Hunt, or The Dragon Reborn. None of the. This is completely made up. Why did they pay all that money to Robert Jordan's widow to make this? They could have made their shitty, flashy looking, modern sensibility, nonsensical, non immersive, boring ass fantasy show without putting the title of Wheel of Time on it. in the woods for a week and I come out and I gotta wash those like washing, washing her clothes what the hell is this what what is happening here Steve I mean you you were right as what's happening it's naive of time like I, I was you know maybe Egwene will catch up later but right now naive is front runner for the dragon reborn uh when Rand dies or gets gentle because you know She's got, she's getting sword trained, right? So we can't show Rand where he's supposed to be getting trained by Lan. They made her a novice. She hasn't channeled for five months, but the Aes Sedai are letting her out to go play swords with the warders when Aes Sedai have no use for swords or never use them. Nynaeve would never do this. She hates swords because she's a healer. Hey, by the way, you're like 30 minutes in, and have you seen uh, the main character of The Wheel of Time Oh, I've, I've been watching. So so we've seen more sword play from Nynaeve than we've seen from Rand, Perrin, or Matt. It's like nobody's thought to show the woman that is hell-bent on healing people and making people well uh, that healing can be done and showing her how to do healing weaves to maybe help her you know, start to want to channel because... She has a block. Her block is she's just too strong. It has nothing to do with block. anger. She's just too strong and doesn't want to channel. That That's her block. Because no woman can have a hero's journey. No woman can have an imperfection. All of what Nynaeve was, she needed to get angry in order to channel, and we can't have that. But what we do have is this tower that isn't full of women at all. It's just got like four or five people again in the White Tower that are all catty, condescending, and bitchy toward one another, especially those who should be teaching the novices in the accepted. No wonder, no wonder nobody comes to the tower. They don't learn anything. They're just there to do chores all day. Brought this character to the White Tower. He wanted to have gay sex with another woman. <laughs> That's it. Let's get it on. I fell in love with a warder, so I became one. It's like, what oh, you, you're not on? a skilled swordsman that wants to protect people, and no, you just okay. I. Uh, How far in are we? Like, uh, I, 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 it's not far enough, dude. My brain is my brain is melting, dude. I used to taking the B in the B. <laughs> just keep doing it. Let it bloom deep inside of you. The standing sugar. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, I'm going to try this. I don't know if you two's going to let me say it, but we got not a lot of telling Nada Gween about how to take cream pies and how that's like channeling the one source. What what we know the one power's come into this yet? She's just talking about getting screwed. <laughs> Perrin didn't have a wife. Perrin has never had a wife. This is completely insane to me. This is almost fetishized. What we're doing is focusing on the fact that we aged up characters, gave them made up backstories just to create false drama to take away time from the actual series of events that we were supposed to adapt when they were supposed to make this the next Game of Thrones. What do we have? We've got a crying little boy who misses his dead wife who he killed, who came to him in a wolf dream as a zombie. He's now putting in a boat with a candle on it with sad music. And this, this is what we're getting instead of the great hunt. They're five months journey away. 
There's nothing to have your suspension of disbelief taken away because the show never allows you to suspend your disbelief. Well, it's just like, oh, don't worry. He just, he, they got a letter from him. It's like, well, how? It's like, well, don't think about that. It's like, I, I, I have to think about that because you've made it part of your plot. So if you don't explain how they're getting consistent letters on parents' whereabouts, it makes me wonder about how he's get. no, just don't think about that. It's like, all right, well, you're lazy. You can't write. But they're hugging, Steve. That's the important part. We have two BIPOC females. And crying. More, more hugging and crying. We are 49 minutes and 30 seconds <laughs> into the first episode of season two. And there's a guy that the show says is Rand Elthor holding up a lantern with a shaved head. They, they lit the things at Beltine, right? 40 minutes into your Great Hunt Dragon Reborn adaptation, the main character of the series shows up. That's I'm angry that I have to watch this shit because this is stupid. The it's writing boring. is pathetic. If I didn't know the Wheel of Time and I just tried to watch this, like a, like just a fantasy show that was on, I would have turned this off a long time ago. Especially this episode. It's just incredibly boring. Uh, on top of everything else that's wrong. You know, uh, anything to do with the books is basically a throwaway line. The Great Hunt and Ilian. It's like, oh, Ilian. Bill Doman says, do be. Oh, my God, he said spray. It's like, just just because you say things, it's the same thing as, as, as oh, you're, we're using the names of the characters in, the, in some of the places they go to. Everything else has nothing to do with anything. So we have holiday family drama. Like, this is a Hallmark Channel Christmas dinner, and we've got tense relationship issues going on. None of this exists in the books. That's where we always start from and, and figure out how to tell the story of these people that everyone loves and, and see through their emotional journey. And then we, we fit in everything else around that. They've traded out anything that would have been fun and interesting and actually be the Game of Thrones that they wanted to make this. This is literally three people guilt tripping land for not just obeying Moraine and taking her sh her, her crap and uh, oh just take it and be her butler take her her food you know because you're her warder it's your, it, apparently now it's a warder's job to to bring their Aes Sedai food that's not how it works no Bye. it was mutual respect it was trust it was equality this is intersectional feminism it it and it doesn't work it's boring. It's so silly. It's just like he's Glenn's absolutely right here, and they're all telling him he's wrong. I've had enough. I'm done with it. And they're like, well, maybe you should listen to her. That's your job, dummy. It's like, what? What did I just watch? She got stabbed again. She's John Rambo. So, so all those videos I made were absolutely right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one thing to guess that the show is going to be this stupid and this non-canonical. It's another thing to watch it happen. She got stabbed again. What, dudes in masks now? The implication is is Moraine stabbed one through the cheek. Yeah. And it died. The only way to kill a fate is cut his head off. And then yeah. it still keeps fighting. Yeah. This show doesn't even doesn't even try like the little things that would be like oh hey the like hey the, they made the fade move they're paying right nope not even don't even make an attempt at that. Rafe Judkins has abandoned even using the post-it notes that I talked about in season one to try and pretend this is a, an adaptation. Dude, her intestines should be everywhere. She just got oh, she sliced across the belly by a Thakandar blade. This is a Siffy or Sci-Fi Channel bad show level of fighting that's going on right now with characters we don't care about, which just had family drama for Christmas dinner. Who cares? There is nothing of Wheel of Time in this really ridiculous show. I hate the fact that these episodes are so long. I hate the fact that this just feels like it, it could be any anything out there. And it feels like whatever they're trying to do with this show, the fantasy genre is an inconvenience for their ability to have people sitting down and talking about their feelings. There could be people who watch this show and they think that, you know, Leandrin's the hero and that, uh, you know, Moraine 
really should be thinking more about the world like Leandrin does. So I think if, if we as storytellers can create both heroes and villains that have, um, you know, a full set of emotions, a full set of, of passions and drives and feel fully human, then it really leaves it in the hands of the audience to decide who are the heroes and who are the villains. I'm Salty Traveling C. You have a good one.